The first lens we're going to talk about is this one. This is what is called a Fresnel lens. What Fresnel figured out was that it's not the thickness of the lens that counts, but rather the curvature of the lens. So what he did is he chopped it up into little pieces and compressed it. So this, these curves here match the curvature of the lens itself. And that is what you actually see right here. Where did I get this from? It's an overhead, right? This is just the lens in an overhead. And this particular event, uh, figuring out the Fresnel lens, was very important as far as um, lighthouses are concerned. It made it so that the lighthouse lenses could be very, or at least a lot thinner, and they were um, therefore much more efficient and much better. It's very fun to play with, but unfortunately the thing is that you don't actually see it, it's the people looking through that see the interesting thing about the lens here. I'll hang this around. And we have a video for you that I have created. Again, we have on the left, so this is the same type of video I created having to do with the mirror. On the left, what you have is the camera is placed behind the lens so that you could see the image. And then on the right, you could see here is the lens, the camera is placed right behind that, and you'll see me show up just in a moment because I'm right over. quite a bit of fun to play with. <laughs> All right, let's go through some basics. All right, we start out at the beginning. Right here, you should be able to tell me at least two of the three image characteristics. Thomas, give me one. Inverted. Number one, you can see the image is inverted. I'm not standing on the ceiling. Number two, black Um, it's um, I forget the word. It's not the right size. It's like smaller than. It is reduced. Yeah. Reduced. Okay. So the image is reduced. I'm not about yay tall. Okay. So then I move forward. And I want to talk about a specific location. Right. It's coming. Not yet. Okay, so here, I'm moving my hand in and out. What am I playing with? The focal point, right? So when my hand gets in front of the focal point, this is a good moment right here to talk about. Because at this particular moment, my hand is in front of the focal point, but my head, my body, is behind the focal point. So my body is still inverted. What about my hand? It's upright. So my hand is actually a virtual image right now, and my body is a real image. So again, I am a three-dimensional object, so I can be at different locations relative to that focal point. So hopefully you have identified that there are a lot of similarities between mirrors and lenses, right? Because we just used a bunch of terms that all have to do with lenses. So now, or a lot have to do with mirrors, and also have to do with lenses. So what I'm gonna do now is walk through some of the similarities between mirrors and lenses so that you can see. So if we have this type of a mirror. If this is our object class, this makes this what kind of mirror? Wow, class, you are exceptionally poor at responding sometimes. What kind of mirror is this? Concave mirror, okay. If this is a concave mirror, class this side, the same side as the object, is the real or virtual side? This is the real side. That makes this side over here the virtual side of the mirror. That means that the image distance when it's real is greater than zero, the image distance when it's virtual is less than zero. Class, is a mirror an opaque or a transparent material? <coughs> opaque. 
So does light bounce off or go through the mirror? Bounces up, right? That's why the real side of a mirror is on the same side of the object as the object, because the light bounces off the mirror. The parallel for a lens is a lens that looks like this. It is called a converging lens. The reason a converging lens is called a converging lens is because it converges all the light rays toward the principal axis. That's what it means to be a converging lens. And I showed you a converging lens last, uh, the last time I did a lecture on mirrors with the Elmo. Now, if the object is over here, class, does light go through or bounce off of the lens? It goes through. Goes through. So the real side for a lens is going to, in this case, be on the left or right-hand side of the lens? The right-hand side. <coughs> this, bless you, is the real side for a lens, and this is the virtual side. In other words, this is where the image distance is less than zero. This is where the image distance is greater than zero. Notice how they are flipped, mirror versus lens. And it all comes down to the fact that light bounces off the mirror and light goes through the lens. That's it. That's why they are switched. So the lens equivalent of a concave mirror is a converging lens. Just to cover our bases here, if this is our object class, this makes this what kind of mirror? Are you okay? Because you just took a quiz on this. So I would hope that you would be able to answer this. You, I'm, I'm, I'm talking y'all. Y'all, there's no singular here, it's y'all. Do y'all know what kind of mirror this is? Yes. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> a convex mirror. The equivalent for a convex mirror is called a diverging lens. A diverging lens looks like A diverging lens is called a diverging lens because it causes all the light rays to diverge away from the principal axis.